Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing chat spat and I have so much to talk to you guys about. Some good, some bad, some a little weird, but there's a lot of topics and a lot of things I want to touch on. So this might be a little bit of a long video, but we only have three uploads this week. So I'm figuring a lot of you might like that. So I wrote all the topics down in my little joyful little secrets book. Hmm, mysterious. So if you guys want to see what we're going to be talking about today, then just stay tuned and we'll get right into it. Okay, so first off, I want to touch on something that happened in my last Get Ready With Me with my vapor that a lot of you seem to have a huge problem with. Um, some just kind of found it a little disappointing or disgusting. I don't really know, but I honestly lost a lot of subscribers over that video and received a lot of bad backlash. Now, I just want you guys to know that I wasn't trying to be sexy or cool. I wasn't trying to promote smoking to children. I'm a mother, so when someone tells me that I'm being irresponsible to children who might be watching me, I get very irritated because I feel like that's not so much, um, um, constructive criticism as you're kind of telling me that I'm a bad mother or I'm an irresponsible mother because I am a mother I have children so if you're telling me that I am irresponsible to children on on the internet online then how could I be as a mother offline you know and I find that very insulting and I wanted to touch on this subject and the taboo surrounding it now, honestly, I always vape while I film because it takes hours for me to do that, especially with Get Ready With Me, so I'm constantly vaping throughout it, and that's just what happens. I always have shots like what I showed in there, and I just always edited them out, and I was like, you know what? That day, I was happy. I was like, you know what? I want to share a part, another part of myself, of who I am with my subscribers, and I wanted to be honest. You know, this is what happens when I'm doing my makeup. I vape. I'm proud of vaping and I'm not going to let anybody make me feel any different and I want you guys to know that if you find it disgusting, if you find it to be me trying too hard or something that you're just not down for, you are more than welcome to unsubscribe from me. I'm not going to hold you hostage to my channel but I'm also not going to let people make me believe that I need to suppress a part of me of who I am because then I'm just going to be attacked for being fake and that's just not who I am. I know that you really can't win on here no matter what you do, no matter what you say. People are here to pick it apart. They're here to judge you. They're here to criticize you and I understand that and you're more than welcome to do that. You're well in your right but you're also well in your right to unsubscribe. You don't have to belittle me in the comments. You don't have to attack me in the comments. It's not constructive criticism at all. Um, it's assumptions. It's rude. It's belittling and honestly I'm proud of this. I smoked since I was 14 years old. I'm almost 30 years old, you guys. I've smoked for over a decade and I finally quit smoking. I haven't had a cigarette in over two months and I am so damn proud of that fact. And honestly, I left the smoke in the video in the intro because I was messing around with the editing. As you can probably tell, since there was a filter over it, I had some crazy things going on in it. I was really just trying to step up my game and mess with my editing and my editor because it's kind of new to me. I switched over to a new one and I really wanted to see what I could do with it. So that was really a huge reason why I left that in as well. And I wasn't trying to show kids who watch my channel that smoking is cool or anything but I'm also not responsible for other people's children. This is obviously not a G or PG rated channel. That's very obvious. I swear I talk about sexual things. This is not a channel for children. That's very obvious. I think that parents, because I am one, parents need to monitor what their kids watch and there's no way in hell I would allow my child to even watch YouTube or if I did I would hover like a plane um, so that is their job to be like you can't watch something or you shouldn't watch something or to monitor what is being watched and to tell their kids about vaping or smoking or the legal limit to do things and when. That's not my job. It's not my job what whatsoever and I'm sorry if anyone doesn't agree with that. I know that people look up to me. I know that kids can be watching that are very impressionable. I'm not ever going to come on here and say this is cool kids. You should do it. It'll make you look awesome because no it won't. I wish I didn't have to do this. I wish I never started smoking but I'll be damned if I'm going to 
going to be judged for bettering myself and showing you guys exactly who I am and being 100% on my channel. I'm not going to be belittled for that, brought down, or hated on for it. So if you want to unsubscribe, you are more than welcome. I'm sad to see you go, but I'm going to stay true to myself. And I really just wanted to come on here and tell you guys that. Now it really does kind of coincide with another thing that I wanted to talk about, which is subscriber loyalty versus creator loyalty. Now it's really disheartening, and I know that a lot of creators won't talk about this just because it can be insulting to their subscribers or hurt people that it doesn't pertain to, which I do want so many of you to know that this is probably not you I'm talking about. So please don't be insulted or angry. I mean, if you're watching this and you're probably a regular here on my channel, and if you are a regular here on my channel, probably 90% of you, this is not who it's towards. But there are some people who just the loyalty there, there is none. And you don't have to give a creator loyalty. You really, really don't. But we love that. We love making friendships and bonds and long lasting friendships that come with loyalty, you know, where this person's always going to watch your videos. They're always going to support you. They may disagree with you every now and then, but you know, that's 100% a friendship. And that's what a lot of creators look for when they have subscribers. You know, they have subscribers that are super amazing supporters and there's a loyalty there. And I feel like with so many other subscribers, there's no loyalty there at all. There's no obligation to be loyal there. But with a creator, we are obligated to be loyal to our subscribers, to our viewers constantly. And I find it very disheartening sometimes, especially with things like what happened in my last Get Ready With Me. I had people that have supported me for so long, just down me so hard on something that I'm very proud of. And it just, it hurt really, really bad. And I feel like there's just no loyalty there. Like people will turn on you as easy as shit, like over over the littlest things, over an assumption, and bam, they're gone. And while I don't care about the numbers, I came on here to make friends, to meet people and talk to people from around the world. So when I've had someone on my channel, and I know everybody, if you're a regular commenter or you're on my other social medias, I know who you are. I see your profile picture, I see your name, I know who you are. It's kind of like burned into my mind. So when I see you commenting all the time, all the time, and then I do one thing that is not even a against the law. It's not horrendous. It's not like this horrible thing. Like I'm not out punching babies and they're just like unsubbing. See you later. Or they just tear you apart. That non-loyalty there is just sickening to me. Like they'll unsubscribe to you from, for the dumbest shit, for the dumbest shit. And it just, the loyalty, the non-loyalty there kills me. But I'm here all the time working my ass off every single day for all of you because I love it and I love you guys and I work my butt off. I cut my weekends with my family so I can sit here and film and work the whole weekend. I work over 12 hour days on the weekends to try to get up videos for you guys every week. You know I do giveaways whether they're from PR or out of pocket. I always ship them out of pocket so I spend money for you guys. I'm constantly doing giveaways and I just feel like I am as loyal as it gets. I'm not just going to Appear. I'm not just going to scam you out of a giveaway. I'm not just going to never have giveaways. I'm always going to give back. I'm always going to be thankful to you guys. I'm always going to be working my ass off for you guys. And there's just some people who there's no obligation there for them to be loyal and they're not. And they pick you apart and they turn on you in the blink of an eye. And it's just so disheartening. And I really wanted to express that to you guys. I wanted to talk to you guys about that and how it feels being a creator when you try so hard so hard and you just get shit on. So some days you just want to give up and I'm telling you the other day I was this close to deleting my channel and calling it quits and just being over it, over doing giveaways, over doing anything because of the feedback that I got from that video. And don't take it wrong, I don't freak out over constructive criticism but a lot of that, a couple of them were very constructive but a lot of it was not constructive criticism. It was just I don't agree with what you're doing calling me names, you know, saying really hurtful things and just unsubscribing. And these are people that have been subscribed to me for years and I'm just like, thanks. So I thought that maybe you guys would like to hear about it from a creator's perspective um, about how we feel sometimes when it comes to loyalty or friendships on here when there's a creator that takes their channel very seriously and they love their viewers and they give their viewers their all and then things like that tend to happen when they're just trying to share a piece of you, an honest piece of them with you. It's, it's very disheartening and that's why a lot of 
of creators, a lot of bigger creators, just a lot of creators in general, don't write back to a lot of comments. They don't get close to their subscribers. They don't try for their subscribers. They barely upload. If they do, they don't try in their videos. They don't do giveaways. There's a huge reason why so many creators do that and more and more I am understanding and seeing why. I can't be like that because I feel like it's just a big fuck you to everybody who supports me. But some days I feel like that's all I get in return is a big fuck you. And I just wanted you guys to know that and to see that and to see that that does happen. And that while creators like me who give it our all, we get fucked over constantly, shit on constantly, yelled at, you know, criticized, just picked apart constantly. Some days it's very, very hard to take that from subscribers who have always been there and always been so kind. And it's just like, I give up. So I thought that maybe if you guys had a little bit of insight to, you know, what happens like that and how it feels that maybe you can come at it from a different angle or maybe you can try to see the positive in things and or private message somebody or I'm not really sure but you know, even if you don't agree with something that a creator does in their video or it really pisses you off, if they're a creator like me, don't forget that they're human, they have feelings, and they care about you. And they're going to be hurt if you unsubscribe. They're going to be hurt if you leave a nasty message, if you make them feel like they can't be themselves. Like, that is going to hurt, especially if they know who you are and you've been such a great supporter. I just thought that maybe if you guys heard a side of it from a good creator, an honest one, then maybe you could understand and it might help you with your actions in the future. All right, now another thing I wanted to talk about is this 100 coats of whatever challenge that is going around. You guys, I have to talk about this. I have to give my opinion. If you are a creator and you've done these, please don't get offended. This is just my opinion. I've had some people comment and ask me to do them or ask me why I'm not doing them and I'm absolutely not doing them. Just like I'm absolutely not going to do the highlighter challenge either. I will do challenges when they pertain to something on my channel or they're actually like the five minute makeup challenge or the no mirror, mirror makeup challenge. Challenges can be a lot of fun, you guys. Now what I feel like is happening here as to why this kind of crap is happening is I feel like that all the good challenges have been done already and kind of played out and creators are losing their creativity and stuff like this just kind of pops up. Now it's kind of cool to watch one video. You know, you see one person do something so outrageous and you're like, holy crap, like that's kind of cool. But then people have to grab a hold of it because of the views. They want other people's success or they just really just think it's fun and they want to do something different with it. And it just gets so overplayed. It's so ridiculous. I find it to be such a huge waste of product, especially with the highlighter. The highlighter challenge, you're wasting all of your best makeup. Okay, let's be real. Highlighters are like the best makeup ever besides blush. And you're wasting all your highlighter for what? To show everybody every wrinkle and pore that you have on your face? No, absolutely not. Nikki will not be doing that. It's not fun. I'm not wasting my product. I'm a broke bitch. I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to be showing you, let's see how much pores Nikki has on her face just so she can look like a tin man and waste all our damn products. And just like with a hundred coats of things, that's such a waste, such a waste of product that I just, I can't, I can't do that. So my SD card was just full and now I totally forgot where I was. I'm probably going to edit this and be like, duh, Nikki, but... At the moment, I don't remember. So I just wanted to tell you guys that I, I don't really feel like those kind of challenges are beneficial. I think that for one or two of them to come out, yeah, they're really, really cool. They get a lot of views, but I'm not going to jump on that train because it just gets way too played out. People get very angry about them and it does nothing for anybody. It's a little bit of entertainment, but after you've seen one, two, ten, twenty, people are just like, I'm not going to watch this and you're going to get no views on those kind of videos. And I know that we are here for the views. This is why we make videos, but I'm just not into that kind of stuff and I'm not into wasting my products. And I really wanted to know your guys' opinion and what you thought about them. I do know that a lot of my creator friends have made a couple of them and I did watch them because I support them and I support everything that they do. But it's just not something that I will do. And if it's a creator that I don't really watch all that much, I'm definitely going to skip over it. And especially like the self-tanner ones and that's just, or the eyeliner ones. I don't know. There's just, it's not really my cup of tea. And the challenges like that are not my cup of tea to do. I don't mind doing some challenges that are super entertaining and they can be really, really funny. But this is just kind of dumb to me. I'm not going to lie. I think the only one that I actually really found a lot of humor in and found just to be worth watching and 
you know, just the challenge was everything, was Jenna Marbles. And I'll leave that one down below if you guys haven't seen it, but she's funny as shit. And that's kind of what her channel's about, is comedy. And so I was like, yeah, that one makes sense to do. That one makes sense to do. But seeing them everywhere, it's... It's just not my kind of thing. I don't like to follow the trendy things that are happening. And maybe that's why I'm under 10,000 still. But I like to just not do that kind of stuff. I was never really a follower. You know, I'm just not that kind of person. So yeah, I definitely want your guys' opinions on if you really like watching them. If you've made a video with that, like, how was it for you? Was it just not worth it at all? Or was it worth it? Like, view-wise your products being gone wise like was it worth doing because I mean that's a lot of filming a lot of time a lot of product for a couple minute video and I'm just like I don't understand the hype about it I don't understand the hype about a lot of stuff on here now the last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is off-grid parenting and this is something that I actually saw on Facebook and I clicked on it and I was just like whoa like whoa so this is for all of my parent viewers um and even if you're not a parent i still want your opinion on this because you can still have an opinion on anything even if it doesn't pertain to you that's just the glory of being human so what i get from the gist of off-grid parenting is you don't parent like society tells you you should now at first when i was reading that i'm like hmm you know i really don't think that i parent like society tells me i should i kind of do what works for my children what works for my family and sometimes people are like huh like you do that but it works for us and so and it's not illegal so you know like I thought that's what off-grid parenting was, but no. This was about this family, and there was two children. There was a girl and a boy, and then the mom and the dad. And the boy was five years old, and he was still breastfeeding. Um, they don't discipline their children, so the children were very out of control. They didn't believe in discipline. They just believed in, like, positive reinforcement, which didn't work for these kids because they were on a tv show and they were backstage jumping on the couches and being rude to the staff and like freaking out and they just did a whole bunch of things that were like not the norm of what you see from parenting and you know like breastfeeding at the age of five is something that i would never do i would never do i breastfed both of my children but i breastfed them until <sighs> So they started eating solid food and that's when I started weaning them off. Now I can understand waiting, you know, two or three years old. That's really pushing the limit for me. But, you know, I can even understand that to an extent if they were like a premature baby or if they have some other kind of delays or if maybe you just want to do that. That's your thing. That's cool, you know, but five years old and up, you know, I've seen a lot of parents on social media do that where they're breastfeeding their kids. I mean, I've seen an eight-year-old being breastfed, you guys, standing up, just breastfeeding. And to me, that's not okay. There's a point where when your child starts learning about private parts and, you know, what's private and what can be for certain private sexual things, you shouldn't be doing that. And there are other things that your children can ingest that's just as good as the breast milk. I just, I really don't understand it. If you are someone who's done that or believes in that, please leave me a comment and let me know really the thought process behind that because I find that very uncomfortable. Like to a point where not just seeing it makes me uncomfortable because I really don't like to judge someone like that. I mean, if I saw a kid that old breastfeeding in public, I might be like, oh, and look away. But I would never be like, you need to get out of public, you know, or she's a bad mom or anything like that. I would never do that. But it is a little like, who I just saw that, you know, like that kind of reaction for me. And I would never personally do it because I feel like my child would be a little bit too old to be messing around with my breast at that time. So I really want to know the thought process behind that. If you know someone who's like that and you've talked to them or if you do that yourself. But they also homeschooled their kids, but the child is five who's going on six and they said that they had not t they had not taught him at all any letters numbers literally nothing they said that they believed that those kind of things came naturally to a child that they naturally started to learn numbers and letters and words and things like that so they would not teach their kid that they wanted him to be out more in nature 
before he started doing something school-wise and that scared me a little that scared me a lot because I really feel like yes kids do learn some things naturally it just comes naturally but I feel like that's more what comes naturally is more of our human instinct things like how to survive how to survive that sounded weird how to survive and how to love you know how to nurture like things like that come naturally to a child that's a human but things like learning numbers learning how to count learning maybe even learning words can come natural because of just the dialect between you and your parents or other people you learn it but you learn it much slower um i don't understand the thought process behind that because i feel like you're delaying your child and you're not setting your kid up for progress in society whether you believe what you're doing is right or not it's for you to decide I mean it's your life it's your family it's your child you do what you want but when there comes a point to where you're debilitating your child's growth debilitating their their possibility of being in society and being able to mesh into society without being ostracized or just cast out I feel like you're damaging your child in that instance, in that case, and I don't understand it. And it might be ignorance, you know, so if any of you are like this, if you do off-grid parenting, let me know in the comments, you know. I'm not really judging, I'm just giving my opinion on the fact that I don't agree with it. I don't think that it's best for a child. I don't think that it grows a good adult for society. I think that it delays your child to not teach them things like that um and I think that it causes mental issues with breastfeeding that late um being very open like that um very close it's very hard for me to try to explain this but I feel like the older a child is and you're still breastfeeding them or you know you you walk around naked in front of them and this this might be just the way I was raised you guys because you might be looking at me like bitch it's just a body being naked is amazing and I I agree it is um but you have to teach your child privacy that their parts are private that people don't touch them that you don't just go up to a woman and start touching her boobs you know like it creates problems and it, it might not be a problem to do it, but because of how society is today, how sensitive people are today, and how hard it is to be in this world today, I feel like off-grid parenting is a huge no-no. You know, it may not be wrong, but in this day and age, in this society, I feel like you're setting your kid up for failure. And I really wanted to know your guys' opinion on that. I really do. And if I can find the article, I will link it down below for you guys to check it out. I don't know if I can find it again. I don't, it's been days, so I don't know where it is in the feed. But I will try to find it and link it down below so you guys can kind of read off that and get a more more actual gist of what I'm trying to say here because it just boggles my mind so much and I just really don't know how to explain it all to you guys very well but if you know anything about off-grid parenting if you off-grid parent yourself I'd really like your input on this what you guys think about that not teaching your kids letters or numbers breastfeeding past the age of five homeschooling them not disciplining them at all like I'd really like to know your guys's opinion on that because I really think that in this day and age in this society those poor kids you know what I mean like those poor kids so that is everything that I wanted to talk about three really awesome kind of topics one thing a couple of them are kind of just me talking to you guys about my feelings in general but I love your guys's input on it I really I really would I don't always expect you guys to agree with me I don't want you guys to always agree with me but there is a fine line you know there is a sense of loyalty or a non sense of loyalty I just really want your guys's opinion I want you guys's feedback feedback wow Nikki and I of course will be waiting there to respond to you guys so make sure that you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe before you leave and start some conversations in the comments below I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye